Greetings, fellow detectives, and welcome to Boiler Room Detective. The Case of the Cold Flu Pipe On a cold winter day, I met a contractor at a job site to look at replacing the boiler. Entering the boiler room, I smelt the odor of burnt cigarettes and saw an ashtray filled with butts. The room had a single boiler with a gas power burner and a 40-gallon water heater. While reading the boiler nomenclature, I noticed a carbon monoxide detector on the floor. The detector was not plugged in and the battery was removed. My internal spidey sense started to buzz. It does that when something isn't right. The next item I saw was a piece of plywood covering the combustion air louver. We were not there to look at the water heater, but I did. The bottom of the water heater had black streaks looking like flame roll-out. The flue pipe was sprinkled with white powder, and upon closer look, there were pinholes in the flue piping. The boiler started while we were there, and I reached over and touched the water heater flue pipe. It was freezing cold. I suddenly realized what was going on. Since the combustion air opening was blocked, the power burner got its combustion air from the water heater flue. What's wrong? the contractor asked. Feel the flue, I said. He tentatively reached over and felt it and looked at me. Why is it so cold? he asked. It's using the flue pipe for combustion air. Look at all the holes. They can't use the water here. The flue must be paper thin, I said. We heard the door open and saw the maintenance tech walk into the room. Pete, there's a problem, the contractor said, and motioned to me to explain. This is the part that turns awkward when talking with a customer, because the maintenance person probably was the one that caused the problem. If I confront him, he could get angry. No one likes being told they made a mistake, especially by a stranger. I like to point out what I found and let them figure out if it was their mistake. To his credit, the technician didn't know anything about boilers. While looking at the boiler, I checked the flue pipes and saw the water heater flue was filled with holes. The white powder is from the flue gases condensing. See the holes? It's leaking flue gases, including carbon monoxide, into the room and the building. I would not use the water heater until the flue is replaced and the water heater and chimney checked, I said, allowing him to save face. The maintenance person said the boiler room was the only place on site where the employees could smoke. They complained the room was cold and one of the employees installed plywood over the combustion air louver, not knowing it affected the boiler and water heater air to fuel ratio. Someone unplugged and removed the battery from the carbon monoxide detector because they thought the cigarette smoke caused the alarm to sound. Mind if we remove the plywood from the combustion air louver? It's needed for the boiler to operate properly, and it's the code, I said. Really, he asked, and I explained how the boiler uses air from the louvers for proper operation. He helped us remove it. This could have turned into a disaster. Every fuel-burning appliance requires combustion air for proper operation. Wall openings are the most common ways to provide dead air in commercial buildings. If you have one opening, the opening should be within one foot of the ceiling. The opening should be one inch of free area for every 3,000 BTUH of input of all the fuel burning appliances in the room. The second option is two openings. One opening should be within a foot of the floor and one opening within a foot of the ceiling. Each opening should be one inch of free area per 4,000 BTU input. Ducted combustion air is also used. A vertical duct 
you would need one inch of free area for every 4,000 BTU input. Horizontal duct, you would need one inch free area for every 2,000 BTU of input. If you're using a mechanical ventilation system, you need 0 0.35 CFM per 1,000 BTU input of all appliances in the boiler room. Lastly, indoor combustion air requires 50 cubic feet of area per 1,000 BTUH. So if you're in a room, you want to be able to measure the width, the height, and the length of the room, and that gives you your area in cubic feet. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have my two websites. The Brewing with Steam site has monthly blog posts on steam systems for breweries and distilleries. I have written 11 books on boilers and they are available on Amazon. In addition, you could find some of my writings in these fine publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective, and I hope to see you on the next case.